Okay, so here we have all 12 of our strips. This is what we need if everything goes right to build a two-piece, one-tip rod. As you can see, all these strips are terribly crooked. There's kinks at the nodes. There's big bends in between the nodes. We've got to take all those nodes, all those sweeps, and get everything straight and flat. In addition to getting the sweeps, the curves taken out of the strips in between the nodes and getting these kinks taken out at the nodes, we're also going to take a small file and we're going to file this little ridge where that node is on the exterior of the comb. And we're going to look at this thickness relative to this thickness and make the node thickness match here and here. We want, we want this measurement to be the same as this measurement and the same as that measurement. It's going to help us later on. So here you see me putting a bevel on the butt end or lower end of the strip. That's going to help me uh, push that strip through my roughing beveler. Okay, I've taken and pretty much profiled through these nodes. So I've got the same thickness pretty much throughout the length of the node. This might be a little bit thicker. Anyway, we can visit that again, and we will. Right now, I'm going to put these strips in this little pony vise, this tabletop vise. I'm going to hold the strip a little proud. It's going to be slightly above the vise. So now I've got that node, that annular ring, just a little higher 
than the top surface of this vise. It's important for you to keep the orientation of the strips in the correct direction. To do that, just take your fingernail, and if your fingernail catches on that node, that's up, just like that. That's up. That's how the plant grew, and that's how we want to build the fly rod. The other way, your fingernail just slips right across. It doesn't stop. Again, your fingernail stops right there. Point your finger up. That's up. That's important. Now that we've got the node exposed right here, I'm going to take a handy file. These are called handy files or farmer's files. Depends on, on who makes them. Um, I've taken the edges and safe them just a little bit on that uh, belt sander and that's to to hopefully keep me from from digging into the enamel on either side of the node my process at this point is to run the file push the file across this ridge a few times until I get that ridge knocked down here we go You notice that I'm rocking the file as I go across. Because this came off of a cylinder, there, there is a slight radius or crown to this strip, probably around 15 degrees. But that's all I want to do. Now I've, I've taken that ridge off, and I've got a really nice short node. I can cover that node with my finger. These strips have four nodes each, so again, I'm just going to repeat the process that you just saw. I'm going to repeat it three more times, and then this strip will be prepped. I'm just going to move this down, again, keeping the, the top of the strip above the surface of the vise. There we go, and one more. As you progress down the strip, you got a chance to, to have a look at this enamel side. This is the outer side of the fly rod, and you can see there's a, a defect right there, and it shouldn't, it shouldn't end up in our fly rod if, if this does not disappear through the planing process we will be forced to replace this strip with with one without a, a defect. There we go, so there's one strip, 11 to go. Okay, I'm down to my last two strips. There's four nodes on each strip, 12 strips, so there's 48 nodes. And the idea, the idea is for you to build a really nice looking fly rod using using the best practices. If, if you want to take shortcuts, I don't see anything wrong with that. I just wanted to show you a really nice way of doing this. It's straightforward. And you get a very nice looking fly rod when you're done. I only saw that one defect in going through all these strips so far. And I think I can work around it, which is a good thing. And as I wrap this step up, I'm going to tell you right now that first there's a difference between moisture and water vapor. Water vapor is a gas, moisture is a liquid. And our biggest concern on these fly rods is to keep the moisture or the water out. 
which is going to make the step after this one seem a little a little crazy maybe to you but trust me on this one you're first time rod builder a struggling rod maker or someone that just likes to experiment a little bit and see if his job could be a little easier now those of you that are just getting started in this I would suggest this next step be done with just maybe three strips at a time not not all of them whatever you're doing a, a 2-1 like this or a 2-2 two -two or a 3-2 okay off to our next step so as I was saying for those of you that are that are curious about this process and you don't want to commit to your entire rod uh, or all of your strips maybe just do three or two or one experiment what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all of my strips I'm going to put them in a PVC tube that's filled with water and I'm going to soak them I'm going to soak them for about two days maybe three days I'm going to look at them and it's important when you soak these strips you need to change the water every day so tomorrow morning tomorrow midday I'm going to pour this pour this water out and put fresh water in I'll probably let this go for a couple of days um, these strips will sink rather quickly and I always flip them in for end on the first day I change out the water so this concludes this step of the rod making process